If you were going to be studying the 1960s or the 1970s, and you failed to mention something like the Vietnam War, or you failed to mention something like the great upheaval that was happening socially in the United States, rock and roll is discovered, drugs become really universal, and of course the best rock and roll of all American history took place right in that period, but you might disagree with me. But if you were talking about the 1960s in America and you didn't mention some of these events, you would have failed in your task. You wouldn't be able to understand some of the tremendous things happening in those two decades. Well, if it is true of the 1960s and 70s, it is going to be true of the first century as well. Our assignment is to understand the political and historical forces that were moving between approximately 300 BC and AD 150. If we can understand that margin of history, then we are going to understand the events taking place in the New Testament effectively. For instance, the main subject that Jesus returns to again and again is the subject of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is mentioned over 80 times inside of the Gospels. Now, you have to realize that the phrase kingdom is going to mean something political to anyone living in this period. And so therefore, as Jesus is talking about the inauguration of, of, of a divine rule, God's rule in this world, that is going to be challenging politically to any who are living in that era. Let me give you another example. When Jesus is born, <clears throat> and, and word gets back to Herod the Great that a baby who is a king of the Jews has been born in Bethlehem, which is the historic city of David, Herod is terribly upset about that because he also has the title of king. And therefore what you have at the birth of Jesus is one king born who is now going to be a rival to another king. In John chapter 19, when Jesus is being interrogated by Pontius Pilate, it's a very interesting conversation because Pontius Pilate is trying to ask the question, really, are you a threat to the imperial interests of this part of the world? And Jesus answers him effectively. So therefore, it's incumbent on us to make sure we understand what it meant for Alexander the Great to bring not only his Greek armies through the Near East, but also to bring the cultural forces that came with those armies at the same time. For example, the New Testament is written in Greek, and that wasn't the native language of Judea in the first century. Nevertheless, Greek and the, and the romance of Greek culture swept through the period and stayed with the Holy Land right up to the New Testament period. In 63 BC, a Roman general named Pompey brought his armies through and completely unraveled a Jewish kingdom that was living in the Middle East at that time. What did that mean? That meant that the New Testament era, in fact, the life of Jesus, the life of Paul, they were all living under a Roman occupation. And therefore, anyone who was living inside of the Gospels was having to come to terms with what it meant to live under a Roman occupier. So therefore, for us to understand the events happening in Jesus' life, for us to understand the events happening in, oh, the life of the apostles, we need to understand, well, who was ruling Galilee? Who was ruling Judea? And what does it mean, for instance, that, uh, that, that Jesus is having to come to terms with a man named Herod Antipas? Who is this character Pontius Pilate? And why is it the Sanhedrin decides that he must crucify Jesus? All of these things are potent political events. And if we understand them, um, we will get a glimpse into the life of Jesus and the early church in a very unique way. Here is perhaps the most important political event that took place on the landscape of the first century. In AD 70, Rome attacked Jerusalem and completely destroyed the city and burned the temple to the ground. Now what's remarkable is that if you look inside of the Gospels, you will see that Jesus predicts these events. You will see how these political events were constantly buffeting up against um, Jesus and his followers.